something that's plagued every single one of us as a user are progress bars. In this video, I'm not going to give you a solution to progress bars, but we're going to see how we can go make them work on a splash screen. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In a previous video, which I'll link up here if you haven't seen yet, we were creating a splash window inside of WPF. And I promise you that if you stayed to the end of that video that we could see how we could get progress bars to go work. In that video, I had an indeterminate progress bar. It just kind of shows that things are moving along. That way, you know, your user interface isn't totally frozen, but it's not really that helpful to users. So in this video, we're going to walk through how you can use some interfaces and some method calls to make sure that we can get progress set up for our splash screen. If that sounds interesting. Remember to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. With that said, let's go see some progress. All right, on my screen, I have the XAML preview in Visual Studio here. This is our beautiful splash screen. Okay, it's actually pretty terrible. It's really ugly. You probably want to put a nice, beautiful picture here. I don't have that, so you get magenta instead. But you can see that the progress bar is just kind of scrolling along. This is the indeterminate mode for a progress bar. But we're going to make some changes here to ensure that we can go set it. What I'm going to do is scroll down a little bit lower in the XAML here to our progress bar. I'm going to take off the is indeterminate property here. We'll get rid of that. And now it's just a normal boring progress bar. So we need to do something with this progress bar to go update it. And in order to make that happen, I'm going to walk through a little bit of our splash screen logic that we had from the previous video. Like I said, you're going to want to go watch that first and come back to this one if you have not yet seen that. But in that, we were looking at a splash presenter, which would put the splash screen up for us. And a little bit lower, we had this opportunity where we could go run some background work. When you're running background work, that's probably the spot that you're going to want to be able to say, hey, look, I know I've made progress, right? I have to go load some files. I have to go connect to some services. I have to go restore some state, whatever your application's doing at startup. That's the spot where you're going to know about the progress you're making. So we need a way to be able to tell that bit of code. Hey, look, if you want to be able to inform us about any progress, use this thing, whatever that is, which we'll see in a moment, but use this thing. And that way, if you want to tell us about the progress you've made, no problem, call it, use it. And that way we can show the progress for you. This is just a brief interruption to remind you that I do have courses available on Dome Train focused on C Sharp. So whether you're interested in getting started in C Sharp, looking for a little bit more of an intermediate course focused on object oriented programming and some async programming, or are you just looking to update your refactoring skills and see some examples that we can walk through together, you can go ahead and check them out by visiting the links in the description and the comment below. Thanks and back to the video. We have to have something that we can provide into here in order to get progress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change our API here. It, this should say splash screen progress. And you'll notice that this is the old parameter that we passed in. I'm going to get rid of it in just a moment. I'll comment it out for now. I progress is a built in interface that we can use that's meant for this sort of thing. It's pretty lightweight. If I jump over to it, you can see that it just has a report method and it's a type parameter. So it's not just an integer or a floating point number. You can use anything you want to report progress on, but it's really simple. Just this one method. It's up for us to figure out how we want to go implement that. In my case here, I'm going to use splash screen progress as the state that we're using. And that way we can have that passed in and have it available for the person who is doing the work in the background. And they can call the report method on this thing to have any status update. So if we go back up here, I'm going to go add this back in. I was hiding it in plain sight. So we have splash screen progress. Now this compiles, I can get rid of that. And if we jump back up to our background work that we're doing, this do heavy work async callback no longer is compatible. And that's because it needs two parameters passed in. So this would be progress and then the cancellation token which means now we do have access to progress, right? So if I type here, I can go report progress and then I need to give it a splash screen progress instance that we go make. Fortunately for us, I've gone ahead and done that ahead of time. This is going to be very simple, but you'll see here that I have this progress info. I've actually changed this from a previous video. So I'm going to go put this back. Let's go do this. This should basically get us the percentage along the way. So it's going to go up by 2% every time. And then it's also going to have a message because the splash screen progress 
DTO that we have here, this data transfer object, has a value, which is the progress from 0 to 1, and then a message that we can show in the user interface. And I'm going to have to go back to that XAML file in just a moment, because we didn't actually talk about a spot where we're going to show that. If we continue looking through what we have, this is where we have the progress being reported, but who's responsible for making sure that happens? First, we need an instance of the thing that's going to report progress, and there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. You could have a dedicated object for it. We could make a whole separate uh, view model. We could make a view model or um, a user control associated with that. I'm going to cheat a little bit here because you can go figure out how to apply these patterns for your particular case, but I'm going to make the entire user control, so that entire splash window, is going to be able to report progress. So I'm going to take splash window and pass it in, and we have to go make sure that this thing can report progress now. In order to make that happen, I have this interface that I created. You don't have to use an interface here. We could go take this and just tack it on to the user control. In this case, I'm just going to do this. And now, if we go look at our splash window back over here, it's already implementing this interface, but it needs to have that method so that it can report progress. And here I have this method to report progress, and I'm cheating a little bit because I'm just going to set the text and the value of the progress text block and this progress bar to be the things that come off of progress info. Usually in WPF, what we like to do is use view models for this type of thing, and we have binding. So what we could be doing instead is using a view model that has the progress reporting on it, and then there's just a binding from this splash window to that view model. I'm going to go back to the code over here and make sure that we have no compilation errors, and at this point, we should be pretty good to go. Again, I'm not going to go through all the details of how this showing of the splash screen works. We're going to see if there's any issues with this, and if I need to, I'll go explain what's going on. And instantly, as soon as we go run this and try to show progress for the very first time, we get an error. And this was expected. I planned for this. And that's what's going to be behind door number one here. But this says the calling thread cannot access this object because a different thread owns this. And if you think about it, in our splash screen, we want to be doing background work. We want that to be done on a different thread. That's the whole point of it. We have this beautiful magenta splash screen. We have this important background work being done. But now we're saying, look, I want to be able to report my progress along the way. That progress reporting needs to happen on the user interface thread because we're updating the user interface. So the fact of the matter is that this code right now is currently running on a background thread and we cannot update the user interface. So let's go see how we fix this we can use our handy friend dispatcher to be able to invoke things on the main thread. So all that I've done is taken these two lines and I've wrapped them in this dispatcher invoke call and this will force things to be run on the main thread. It's just something important that you have to think about when you're designing your applications because it's not obvious where things are running. And as soon as you start getting into multi-threaded stuff and things get more complicated, you need to think about where you want stuff to run and control that context accordingly. So if you have to keep scattering around, you know, dispatch or invoke in all of these different places and it doesn't feel like there's a pattern, it's probably a good opportunity for you to rethink the execution flow and maybe sit down, draw it out and decide which parts of your code should be running in the background, make it very obvious and which parts should be running in the main UI thread and also make it very obvious, right? pit of success, force the people that are developing in your application to fall into the right patterns. So this reporting should be done on the main thread, but I think callers should be able to call report from anywhere. We will make sure in this context that we're always going to go do the update on the main thread. Let's go see if this fixes it. And there we go, some progress along the way. But where's our text? Did I go mess that up? Let's go see. I didn't come back to here, but you can see that I just hid the visibility of this thing. We got this nice progress right in the middle. We'll go run it one more time because I know it sped past you the first time. There is all of our progress being done from the background, being updated in the foreground on that main UI thread, and then our splash screen completely closes off. 
Now, as I alluded to earlier in this video, one enhancement we can go make to this code, I'm sure there's many, but one enhancement that we can go make is changing over from directly modifying the user interface controls over to using a view model and binding. So when that video is ready, you can check that out up here. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.